Hey guys, Josh here, and today I would like to share with you 10 useful tips to get started in Doraemon Stereo of Seasons, Friends of the Great Kingdom. You may be familiar with some of these tips if you've played the first game, as many things are similar, but quite a few things are different as well, so hopefully everybody will be able to learn a few things from this video. So let's start, and in the first Doraemon Stereo of Seasons game, making money was pretty difficult, but in this one things are much easier, and one of the best ways to get money is by fishing. There are a few different fishing spots, but my favorite one is in the pond right by the house, as it's close to the shipping bin, so you can fish for longer and ship everything right before 6pm. Most fish you catch will sell for a few hundred coins, and you can easily make thousands just by spending a few hours fishing every day. Other fishing locations like the beach are good too, of course, as sometimes you will get more valuable fish such as the red snapper or even sharks during summer. So there's no wrong location, as long as you fish, you're gonna make a good amount of money, but for me I love the pond on the farm just because it's so close to the shipping bin. So you will be making money pretty quickly with fishing, and at first I would recommend saving it for the house upgrade, which will become available from day 4. It costs 3000 coins, so make sure you keep that amount aside, plus 10 pieces of softwood and 10 stones, which you can easily collect by clearing up the fields on your farm. It will take 3 days to build, and once it's done, you will unlock the ability to invite one of your roommates to help you around. They will water the crops with you, catch bugs and fish, and even help you in the mines, so you will be more productive in everything that you do. Having help really does make a big difference in this game, so that's why I think the house upgrade is the best thing to spend your money on at first. With the rest of your money, I would recommend getting animals as early as you can. They are pretty cheap in this game. For example, a cow is just 600 coins compared to 6000 in the first game. And even the lowest quality milk will sell for 130, so after just a few days, you will be making your money back. So fill up your barn and coop as soon as you can, and that will be a pretty good source of income very early. And some villagers will also ask for eggs and milk sometimes on the bulletin board request, so it's a good idea to keep a few of those products aside. And make sure to check the request every day, as they are a good way to not only make some money, but also improve your relationships, which will be necessary in order to progress in the story. I would also suggest leaving your animals outside every day as that will help increase the quality of their coat, which is necessary in order to win the animal contest. However, you will still need to feed them the same way as if they were inside because they will not find food on their own like in some other farming games. They don't have to be inside to eat, but make sure you just place the food as usual for them and they will eat it. Also, make sure to look at the weather forecast and if there is rain for the next day, just bring everybody back inside or they risk getting sick. Also, if you're wondering how to get the different colored animals, you cannot buy those from the animal store, but once your shed is upgraded, you will be able to use seeds from the store to make your animals pregnant, and then there will be a chance for the baby to be of a different color. So not only should you check the weather forecast daily so your animals don't get sick, don't forget to also check the tackle shop on Sunshine Beach. Buying bait will help you with your fishing, even though personally I don't find it makes a huge difference, but more importantly, check if you received any bottles. In this game, you can receive bottles from friends or strangers, and those can contain valuable items, recipes, or anything someone decides to send. You can also send a bottle every 24 hours in real life, so once a day, and when you send something, you actually get to keep it as well, so it doesn't cost you anything. Just keep in mind that some items, like gems, cannot be sent, but it is overall such a useful system, and you should take advantage of it, Especially if you need items that are seasonal or hard to find, you could have a friend send them to you. If you are looking for friends, feel free to join our Discord with the link in the description, and if you need something specific, there is a good chance someone will be willing to help you. So the tackle shop is important, but don't forget to also check the clinic. Stacy can sell you some drinks that will increase your stamina permanently. They will get more expensive each time. I haven't purchased all of them yet, but the first two will give you 5 extra stamina points. The third and fourth one will give you 10, so the more drinks you get, the more the increase in stamina will become noticeable, and it might not seem like a lot at first, but it really does add up and lets you do way more things in a day, so I would recommend investing in those. Whenever you feel like you have a lot of money and you're not sure what to spend your money on, just go to the clinic, and after a few drinks, you'll see a big difference. Next, even with a lot of stamina, mining can be tiring. Of course, bring a friend if you can, as that will allow you to save some time and energy, but one little useful trick that's good to know is that the location of the holes and the ores on each floor is determined at the beginning of each day. So what you can do if you want to reach deeper levels of the mine quicker, you can just save on the start of each floor, find where the hole is, 
reload your save file and then the hole should be at the same exact spot and you can just repeat that process for each floor and you will easily reach the lower floors where you will find more valuable ores and gems. Also, you might want to know that there is a total of 10 floors in the mine. I suggest you upgrade to the silver pickaxe if you want to get there in order to be able to break the hardest rocks. But once you get to the 10th floor, you will discover the Crystal Lake, which is a great location for fishing. And most of the fish you will find there are more valuable than anywhere else, making it the best fishing location. The only issue is that you have to mine all the way down every time, so it can be a bit tedious and not worth it if you're just going with the intent of fishing. However, if you're already in the mine on that day, you might as well just go to the bottom floor. You will also meet a beluga there and you can give it 3 fish per day and for every fish it will trade you 1 or sometimes even more fish. So just give it your least valuable fish and you will definitely make a great deal. So you'll probably be pretty tired after spending a day in the mine and even though there's no way to take naps after 4pm in this game, there is still a way to get energy easily in the evening. Just head to your house between 7 and 8pm, go around the table where nobody is usually seated and you should see an option to eat, so just do that and that will get you a nice dinner with your friends, which will replenish some of your stamina. It will always be 8pm after dinner, so if you want to be efficient, you could start eating at 7.59, which would only make you lose 1 minute and still give you the same amount of stamina. It's not the biggest replenishment, but considering that it's completely free and doesn't take that much time, I think it's worth it if you want to keep working in the evening. But if you prefer cooking by yourself so you can have more stamina and eat at any time you want, then you might need some honey. You can get the carpenters to build a beehive on your farm, you just need to put a bee inside and after a few days the bee will start producing honey. However, eventually the bee will have to be replaced, but the thing is, bees can only be found in spring. So even though bug catching in this game does not make that much money while you are in spring, just take the time to catch the bees you encounter in the woods and keep them in your storage for whenever you need some honey. And my last tip is pretty simple, but it's a thing that annoys me in so many farming games. And I wanted to make sure everybody's aware of the good news. In this game, you don't have to be afraid of planting fruit trees early because you won't have to cut them down the day that you decide to decorate your farm or change the layout. As you progress through the story, you will unlock a gadget called the slider stick and that will allow you to move trees and crops around your field at any time for free. That's one small detail I love about this game and trees do take a while to grow so I would suggest planting them at the beginning of each season as they become available so you will have time to get some fruit by the end of the season and don't worry too much about where you plant them as you will be able to move them easily eventually. And that's pretty much it for the tips I have for Doraemon Star F Seasons, Friends of the Great Kingdom. I hope this video was helpful. Are there any tips that I did not include? Feel free to share them with everyone in the comments. Leave a like and subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all in the next video.